So a few nights ago, I woke up around three in the morning because one of my kids woke me up and I just couldn't go back to sleep. So I got on Blender and just wanted to make something fun and kind of relaxing. So this is what I created and I got a good response online saying that people were interested in seeing a tutorial on how to make these metal beams. They are procedurally textured with my free rust and also my free metal shader that is available on Gumroad, uh, which is my, my uh, modular pipe kit set. It's also on Blender Market. Um, so go get those for free because the procedural shader is awesome. But I'm going to show you how to make this modular or kit bash uh, beam that you can use on all kinds of stuff. You never know when you're going to need some good support beams, but also I'm sure you're going to learn some good hard surface modeling techniques along the way. So let's get started. All right, so everything we're going to make is going to fit within a specific geometric grid so that we can connect these with other pieces and beams and it'll all line up and look symmetrical like a real construction is because everything is measured down to the centimeter or inch. So we're going to start by making a square and this plane, which is our square, is really going to be our kind of a grid box to fit everything inside of. Now let's size this up a little bit. So S for scale and number four on the numpad for four times larger. Enter to confirm. I'm gonna rotate this to make it upright. So R, Y, 90, enter. There we go. So this is just our, like I said, kind of our box to fit everything inside of. And let's change it into a wireframe uh, plane. By the way, this is not gonna be rendered. So turn off your camera render option here. Um, we're just using it in the viewport for reference. Um, if you don't see this camera, go up to your little funnel button here, your filter drop down and turn on camera so you can see the render uh, option. So you turn that off, it won't render. Turn it on, it will. So turn it off on render. Go to your object settings for the plane. Go down to viewport display, scroll down a little bit, and uh, do display as wireframe. There we go. Now it'll just be a nice outlining square. Now if we press numpad three, it gives us a flat straight on view uh, of this direction looking along the X axis and the Y axis, which is a green line, is going from left to right. So let's start making our vertical beam and then we'll make our diagonal beam. So with our 3D cursor still in the middle, if it's not by accident, maybe you clicked out here, just press Shift C and it puts your 3D cursor back in the middle and it zooms you out for some weird reason. Press Shift A to add, go to cube, and we're gonna size this down a little bit. So I'm gonna press S.5 and enter. This looks a little bit thicker than the one that I made before, but that's okay. We wanna keep things very numerical and orderly because it'll help things later, just trust me. So we want to stretch this up vertically and fill up this whole space. So turn on the magnet, which is the snap, and I'm gonna turn on absolute grid snap. Now to scale this up all the way perfectly to where it just ends exactly on that line, I'm going to go into edit mode and grab the top face by selecting it, go back to flat view with three, GZ to move that top face up. And if you pay attention, look, it's snapping onto this grid. You may need to zoom in a little bit more. If you're zoomed out too far, it just snaps onto the larger increments, but I'm gonna zoom in. And by the way, you can adjust your measurements by going into scene and then units. You can put it on metric, you can put it on imperial. You can also kind of relatively scale everything up and down with that number as well. Okay, so let's move this bottom face down all the way as well, so three, GZ and move it down, it snaps right there within our, our, our guiding box, cool. I wanna leave a little bit of room for that bottom uh, platform where the screws are gonna go on. So I'm gonna leave uh, one, I guess, I don't know, maybe that's a centimeter, I'm not really sure. So move this one down as well, one small box, right? So we've got one gap there. Okay, now we're going to grab the top face, which is already selected, and the bottom face. So hold shift and select the bottom. Now we've got both of them selected. And I'm gonna press E, enter. Don't move your mouse because we want that extruded face to be right where it is. Now let's go to individual origins and we're just gonna scale this extruded face, which is just kind of hovering on top there. We're gonna scale it up by a specific number so that when we do the diagonal one, we can scale that one up at the same amount. So I'm gonna try S for scale and then 1.2, enter. That's not big enough. Let's undo S 1.5, enter. Um. Maybe S1.75, there we go, that's nice. And now we need to drop these down all the way to the bottom, so grab that face, there we go. Three, E, and then move your mouse down and click. Grab this top one, there we go, three, E for extrude and up and click, there we go. Now remember, we expanded this platform by 1.75 mm. times its original size. We'll do that with the diagonal one as well. All right, so that looks cool. Um, let's grab these sharp edges and just bevel them a little bit. That gives a, a touch of realism because 
Um, you know, the only thing that's perfectly sharp like this is a razor blade or a knife, and this is not that. So let's grab all these sharp edges and bevel them. I'm gonna grab this long edge and this short edge. I'm gonna press Shift G and then select similar. Let's do length. There we go. So it grabs all the links similar to that long one and that short one, and that saved us a lot of time. The only ones that are not selected are these top ones. So I'm probably gonna grab these and the base, and let's try that, Shift G length. And did it get them all? Yes, it did, cool. Now you can use the bevel modifier, but I'm just gonna bevel them in edit mode. Um, so Control B for bevel, and as you drag your mouse, you can control the size of the bevel. I'm gonna make it nice and small, and I'm probably gonna add an extra segment in to make this smoother by pressing the plus sign on my numpad. So plus, and maybe another plus, make it real high poly, and enter, there we go. So now the edges are nice and smooth in a very uh, micro detail kind of way, and I like that. Um, let's get rid of this floor by dropping down the overlays and turn off floor, because it just gets annoying. I don't need a whole grid there. Cool, so we're done with our eye beam. Now we need, a, like a, not technically an eye beam, but you know, it's a beam that looks like an eye. So get off my back about that. Uh, we're going, if y'all know the reference to that, by the way, let me know in the comments. <laughs> gonna need you to get all the way off my back about that. That's the reference. Um, we're gonna make the bolts, which is uh, nice and easy. Let's go into face mode, grab this face. It's a trapezoid face, press shift S and then selection to cursor. No, let's do cursor to select it. So our 3D cursor, is snapped right in the middle of that trapezoid. If we press the period key on our numpad, it zooms into that. I love the period key. It gets me around my viewport so much quicker. So with this right there, I'm gonna make one bolt and we're gonna duplicate it all the way around. So with our 3D cursor there, shift A to add. Let's make a cylinder first. And this has 32, that's a bit much. Let's make it 16 vertices, size it way down. This is a bolt. Now, depending on how big your beam really is, the scaling of your bolts is very important. <laughs> I think most bolts are like anywhere between one to two inches, you know, in width, depending on how like heavy and big your structure is. So just think about that before you start making something and you make thousands of bolts all the wrong size. Our 3D cursor is still in the right spot. So we're gonna add another cylinder, Shift A, and I'm gonna make this a hexagonal bolt. Not sure how common that is, but I know octagonal is popular too. I'm gonna go with hex. So there we go. Grab that top face and bevel it. Maybe just one time, like that. Cool, that's our nice, let's go to object view, a little bit easier to see. Cool, cool bolt. And uh, with the whole thing selected, I mean, this is, this is all one mesh, right? With the whole thing selected, let's press W, shade smooth. It looks real funky, but that's okay. We're gonna fix it by going to normals in the, what is this, object data properties, and then turn on auto smooth. So that means that, if a uh, angle is, I always forget, if it's less than this angle, it's sharp. If it's larger, it's smooth, or the other way around. It, it doesn't really matter. Just do that and look, our, our cylinder looks nice and smooth and not angular. So we got one bolt. So grab the hexagonal part and the cylindrical part. Control L, which is like a select the linked, uh, look at this, select linked all, and it grabs everything with those two uh, shapes. Let's press numpad seven to get an above view, but we can't see it because this top part of the I beam, the top part of the beam is blocking it. Press seven again, and we're gonna go to wireframe mode just so we can see through stuff. You could also do X-ray, which is, uh, what is this guy right here? You can toggle X-ray, but I like wireframe for this. And let's snap these things onto the grid, why don't we? So our magnet is still on. So if we press G and move this guy around, look, it's like snapping onto these little measurements. Let's get it right in the middle. I want it to be exact. There it is. Cool, and now let's add, uh, let's do, you can either do like two and two on each side or three, or maybe one here, one in the corner. I don't really know what's standard for construction stuff, but I'm gonna do three on each trapezoid. So here's one. Oh, by the way, let's add a material real quick. Let's call this um, rust, and then make a second one. Sorry, I went to the materials tab here. Make a second one and name it bolt. Just, this is something that will save you so much time later because we're gonna start duplicating this guy. With your bolt material selected and your actual bolt pieces selected, press assign. That way this bolt material is assigned to only those bolts and the rust is to everything else by default. So anyway, back to what we were doing. We got our bolt selected, shift D, boop, boop, boop. Um, I'll do there. Another one, shift D here. We wanna select these two bolts, but to do it real quick, one, one nice trick is to use the circle select tool, which is the letter C on your keyboard. 
And don't click in the middle because this trapezoid face underneath here, we don't want to grab it. It'll select it. See, so watch. So we don't we don't want that. So let me undo. So C for circle select. Just click right on the edge of these two bolt pieces. Remember, it's a uh, it's two cylinders, one hexagonal, one more circular. And with a few, just a few faces selected, you only need one. Press Control L, and there we go. All right, so we're going to put these around the whole side. So Shift D R ninety. Oh, nothing happened. That's because up here. I had it on individual. So I rotated my individual three bolts by 90 degrees. I want to rotate them all based on a median point, which is the middle screw, the middle bolt. So select middle or median point. Now R90, there we go. Move this, these guys over here. Shift D, enter, R90, enter. Move that right there, see how easy it is? I wonder how easy this is in other programs. I don't know. Okay, so we've got our bottom part done. What about the top? Well, we can do a little trick and use a mirror modifier to basically do all this work up here because it's a, it's a symmetrical object. Um, so I think we can get away with that because we're not doing any UV unwrapping necessarily. So this will be fine. I'm gonna press in for your side panel, go to edit and auto mirror is a add-on I highly suggest you get, especially if you do hard surface modeling. I use auto mirror all the time. It's such a time saver because watch, I know this is a vertical, situation, right? Z. But because this is on the negative part of the Z axis, say, you know, the negative area down here on the bottom, I'm going to select negative and then press auto mirror. And look at that. It did all that work just instantly. The bolts are up here. It's sliced in half perfectly. And there's our mirror modifier. So look, it does cut your mesh in half. So just FYI. Um, but that that's the step that I didn't have to do. Cool. So now we have a perfectly symmetrical, uh, you know, Thing over here, if, if we edit down here, it edits up there too. So that's nice. Any change we make is mirrored up there. All right, so we're done with the uh, normal straight beam, right? It looks pretty cool. Maybe a little bit better than my original. And now let's do the diagonal one. So let's, oh, number three for a side view. Let's move this guy out of the way. Right there, cool. Let's recenter our 3D cursor. So Shift C, there we go. And we'll do the cutouts next. Don't worry, I didn't forget about the little cutouts. That's what makes them look so cool. Um, let's press in to get rid of our side panel, shift a cube. And I size this down to 0.5. Remember that very first thing I did. So S decimal five or 0.5 enter. There we go. And now we need to grab our top and bottom faces and we're going to make the diagonal shape now instead of straight up and down. So tab and edit mode, face select. Let's grab this top, let's grab that top face and move it all the way up here. Remember, if you're zoomed in too far out, you won't get these smaller increments. And I left one, yeah, one box thick is how our little uh, bolt platform is going to be. And I don't want it to be over here because then there will be no room for the extension piece if I want it to be a true square. So let's see how many squares wide this extended piece is. So one, two, three and a half, almost four. So let's leave four squares empty right there. There we go. So that'll be enough room on the right corner to fill in our little uh, bolting platform. Okay, let's grab this bottom piece down here, back to number three, flat view. Move it on down, and four empty squares. One, two, three, four, awesome. Looks great, it's not a perfect 45, but that's okay. So let's uh, grab these top and bottom faces and press, do our little, our little platform. So uh, E for extrude, but enter, so they're not moving anywhere. And then make sure we're on individual here, not median. So individual origins of each face, right? Top and bottom. S for scale, 1.75, enter. Ah, nice. Everything is the same. I like it. Now, I just thought of this. <laughs> this is fun to uh, realize that I make mistakes live. So here's my idea. Instead of modeling this all over again, why don't we use this guy and just warp it a little bit to fit this shape? So let's get this out of the way first, just in case I'm wrong. Boop, 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 boop. Okay, let's bring this back or duplicate it. So shift D. All right, now let's try and grab all these top vertices and shift them to the right and the bottom to the left. So tab into edit mode. We'll turn on your X-ray to grab all the polygons that are on the back side and not just the front. B for box and grab all of these. And then G, Y, yeah, look at that. It's doing that. I don't know if there's any way to have it uh, not do that, but we could just apply the mirror modifier. So. Let's do apply, tab into edit mode, grab these and move them over here. Cool, and then undo, uh, deselect, which is Alt-A. 
and then B for box select, and then G, Y, slide these over to their opposite. Cool. So look at that. We just made a beam with less work than I thought. So cool. <laughs> I am all about efficiency. And if there's ever an easy way to do things, then I try to do it that way. Um, all right. So cool. We made our beams. Let's do the little cutout. So I'm going to uh, get out of x-ray because it makes things look clear. Grab this edge here and shift S. Cursor just selected. The reason why I do that is because I know that this is exactly in the center this way and this way, and it's also completely flat on this face. Instead of moving things around, trying to center it and be off a little bit, this is completely exact 100%. So it's a few extra clicks, but at least it's it might actually save you time. And what we're gonna be doing is making a cube and using that cube to cut out a hole um, out of the beam. So we made a cube. Let's just use S to scale it down and then SZ to scale it up. And this part doesn't really have to follow any specific measurement. You can kind of eyeball this, but it does need to be centered up here. There's gonna be another one down here, and then we're gonna also copy it over here on the other side. And this is gonna cut a chunk out of the beam, just like in my originals. Okay, so let me make sure it's not too high, not too low. That's good. Now let's uh, go into tab edit mode, grab this edge, and to save some more time, shift G length. So now we have all, so with this edge selected, let's hold shift and select the other edges because we're gonna bevel these, make them uh, nice and round, okay? Control B, oh, look at this. The bevel's weird because we scaled this up in object mode instead of edit mode. So let's get out of um, edit mode into normal object mode, right? And then if you look here, see, so look at the scaling numbers, they're all crazy. So let's do control A, apply scale, puts them back to one and doesn't change your object. So now it just resets your numbers, right? So that's good. So back in edit mode and look at that, our edges are still selected. Control B to bevel and that looks normal. So let's do it, you know, all the way and then plus to add some more segments, make it nice and round. Now let's press A to select all, three for a side view. And uh, we're gonna flip this down here. One easy way to do that is leave your 3D cursor right there in the middle. Go to 3D cursor, Shift D, R, 180, enter. There we go. That just rotates it, see, around the 3D cursor, wherever it is. It could be over here <laughs> and mess you up. Now we need them to be on the back side so we can put our 3D cursor in the middle of this object. In object mode, just select the whole beam, Shift S, cursor just selected on the bottom. And there we go, look, the 3D cursor is right in the middle of the whole mesh. So grab this mesh, which is going to be a cutter, a Boolean cutter. Tab in edit mode, A for select all. Now this is weird. I feel like in 2.8, you didn't have to do this next step to go to the top view. Um, but in like 2.83, like you could just be over here and RZ stuff around the 3D cursor, but it doesn't work right. So let's go to numpad, numpad seven. I'm using 2.92 by the way, Blender 2.92. And then above view with the thing selected and your 3D cursor in the middle, press shift D, R180, enter. So just like before, we just rotated around the 3D cursor to the opposite side. And now it's going back to normal view. Here we go, object, solid view. Cool, um, now let's click on this four piece mesh and then shift select the beam and press control minus by your numpad. And this does an automatic Boolean operation. Um, if that doesn't work, I think you may not have a uh, bool tool add-on enabled. I think it's a bool tool add-on that does this. This gives you that keyboard shortcut. And it automatically, if you go to the beam, look, it added this Boolean for me and it used the cube thingy to cut out the shapes. So cool, that's that. Now let's copy this and move it over here and use it on this guy. So three for flat view, shift D. And also when you, you when you use that, um, that bool tool thing, it makes them into a wireframe. So that don't be bothered by the, the fact that this looks like a wireframe, it's okay. Um, and let's rotate at a perfect 45. Let's see how close, oops. Go back to individual origin. And the origin of this, look at this, is actually up here. So to fix that and to fix your origin point of any mesh, assuming it's symmetrical like this, press W, set origin to geometry. So it kind of does this like, a, like an average, you know, place in 3D space. And if it's a symmetrical object, it'll put it right in the middle, cool. So three for side view, R45, yeah, it's a little bit less. So let's just eyeball it, get in real close, and R, and we want it to be parallel. You can actually move it 
just for the time being, move it out here so we can line up these, these lines. Once we get the angle right, then we can put it back in the middle. So that's pretty close, a little bit further. There we go. So instead of it being a 45 degree angle, it's a negative 38.7 degree angle. And yeah, the, the yellow line and the beam look parallel to me. So I'm happy with that. So let's turn back on our snap G to move this back in the middle. I think um, I shouldn't have turned on this face thing. Just keep it on increment. There we go. So G, yeah, it just snaps onto the increments of the, of the um, grid. Cool. So look, it's already in place all the way around with this, with the cutting object selected, shift select your target and control minus to do your automatic Boolean operation. Sweet. Nice and cut out. All right. Now we're going to apply these so that we can move these around and not, you know, have that <laughs> happen. So go to your modifier, apply the Boolean. I'm just going to apply the mirror modifier to make it more lightweight. Grab this guy, apply this Boolean. And there we go. Now, um, if you're for sure good with what you just did, you can delete the cutter just to clean up your scene. Delete that square guy. Let me show you how I made that design um, that you saw earlier. So let's keep this in the middle. Make sure your snap is on. Grab this beam. And with our move tool over here, by the way, T is your tools uh, menu. I put this right there. And then I'm going to Alt D, which you know keeps a, a, a linked duplicate. Put that there. And then grab this one, Alt D. I move this right here, but we need this to be inverted. So just rotate it on the Y axis, 180, enter. There we go. And that right there looks like Roman numerals is uh, the pattern that I use over and over. So if, once you have this, you can select these guys and you can Alt D all of them together, Alt D. See, and then just to repeat that, just to shift R, shift R, shift R, and you've got that up down, you know, zigzag pattern. Um, forever. So that's how I did the pattern. But let's get back to the materialing, uh, which is the, really the fun part for me. Um, so let's drag this down. If you if you don't have a split screen, you put your mouse right in the, the intersection of these these windows, and you get a crosshair cursor on your mouse cursor. So once you're on the inside of the 3D viewport crosshair cursor, you can click and drag down, and you can do a split screen. So half will be viewport down here. And then the other half up here, let's change it to the shader editor. Let's just grab one of these guys, go to materials, click on your rust material. And this happens all the time. You don't see anything, but there is stuff in this window. So you can either zoom out and find it, or if you're just in the, the void of nothingness, press A to select the nodes you can't see, and then period to zoom over to them or pan over to it. Okay, so we're going to add the rust shader and the metal shader, which are free from my modular pipes kit bash set that you can get online. Um, so to add a shader or any kind of asset, whether it's an object or a material or anything from another Blender file, here's how you do it. File append. So append is only work for blend files. And then you got to go find the thing, which for me is a product folder, which here's all my goodies that I sell online. These are on Gumroad and Blender Market. So I'm going to go to pipes kit. And then here's the one that's sold online. Go to node tree, because these are node groups, I can add these. You can also go to materials and add them this way, but I, I'm just gonna add the actual node group itself. So I'm gonna click on metal and hold shift and click on rust. There we go. And then append. All right, now they're in there somewhere, right? We don't see anything, any change, but we will see them if we go into our node editor area, shift A and click on group, and then here it is, rust shader. So now we have a rust shader. This actually takes the place of the principal BSDF. See the green dot? That means it's shader information. It's not color information. So just plug this into the surface right there, and you can delete this. You don't, you don't need that anymore. And here we go. So we can go into material view and see our materials. Give it a second. There we go, and where's the color? Oh, we don't have any color. So click on our base color, Add that classic red with a little bit of orange. And um, let's add some rust. So hold shift and move the add rust to the right. That will more, uh, you know, very carefully add. You can add with more control. So there, my rust looks really small. Like maybe this beam is ginormous, but I don't like that. So let's move our scale down. Maybe something like that. Cool. And then the rust decay basically adds a bump map in the rusted areas to give more, you know, rough decay. <laughs> um, we can control how detailed the rust is. If it's just really bad, it's all over the place. 
or just some new spots. So I'm going to put it somewhere in the middle. I love all that greedy detail. These are all procedural, by the way. There's no images used. I had a lot of fun making this shader. And I hope you have fun playing with it. So that's good. Uh, roughness can make, you know, shiny metal or not. We'll put it somewhere kind of in the middle. So it's a little bit of shine. But if it's rust, if it's this rusty, it's probably pretty dirty and not shiny anymore. Um, so there's that. Now let's do the bolt shader. See, these are gray because earlier on we did that little step, which is making the bolt material and applying it. So now let's do shift A and add the node group of metal shader. And then drag this over to surface and you can get rid of that BSDF. Bye bye. And there we go. They just snapped into shiny metalness right there. It's getting real close. Whoa, too close. So we've got the basic color. If you want it to be a typical like steel bolt then make it, you know, kind of bright. Um, roughness, you can control how shiny it is. So don't make it like glass. That's a little just unrealistic. Maybe something like that. You can add noise to the roughness that kind of offsets it. And then we have our scale because it's such a small object. There we go. We got to increase the scale to really see what the noise is doing. If you zoom in, you can kind of see. Play with the scale to get somewhere where, that you're happy with. And if you want to add some scratches, you can also increase this. But you'll probably have to play with the scale here as well. There we go. Just add some dings and dents to it. And this metal shader also comes for free with the modular pipe kit bash set. So just go get it already. Just do it. All right. So this is a humbling video because I just realized I made another mistake. <laughs> I'm sure you guys have noticed it for the past few minutes, but I just realized it. The bolts are not all the same. This bolt has the cylinder right there. This one's a little bit lower. This one has no cylinder, but it's like the rim of the cylinder. Eh, they're all over the place. Um, so yeah, it, I think what happened was when I was moving things with snap on, sometimes they'll jump up or down to the next grid spot and they're all uh, uneven. So <laughs> oopsie. One thing I could do to fix it, I guess if I really want to get in there is um, just try to grab them and move them all up to like there. Now this one's actually up extra high, so move it down. This one's real low. GZ to move it up, and so on and so forth. So oopsie, when you're doing these little details, you know, don't be blowing through it like I did. Uh, let's see if I can grab this face. There we go, there and there. And turn off snap when you're doing these real small things, because the, the snapping, as great as it is, will mess you up sometimes and you can turn on x-ray to see through surfaces like I'm doing right now um, to grab stuff that's covered up. Cool. So yeah, I'm not going to fix it all right now, but um, there you go. I hope you didn't mess up like I did. <laughs> now I'm going to fast forward this next piece. I'm going to make that shell around it like that I did in my original artwork. And I'm going to show you how to do some quick lighting effects to make it look a little more interesting. So here we go. Fast forward time. Okay, so I made my structure around the beams. Now I added the bolt material to this, I don't know what you're gonna call it, framework, but I'm gonna make it a unique one with a different color and different parameters. So you can click on new material, which kind of copies it, make, but makes a new unique one with its own name. And now I can change this. I wanna make it like a dark bluish with uh, the noise will be much uh, smaller because this is a very large structure. Okay, so let's do some lighting and rendering stuff before we're done here. So first we're gonna set our camera view. So I'm gonna get a nice view that I like in my 3D viewport by using you know, my, my mouse wheel, alt shift clicking for pan. And there, I'm gonna say I like this. So now if you have a camera in your scene already that is assigned to your B or you know, your main camera, uh, which is over here randomly, I'm gonna press control alt zero, which moves whatever your main camera is to your 3D viewport view. So now that saved me some time, right? I didn't have to move the camera around and go back and forth. Now in the camera settings, I want it to be a wider angle view, so let's try 35. That looks pretty cool. Uh, as long as you're in individual origins, turn off your snap and you can press RR to rotate your camera around freely, G to move it, and then GZZ to kind of zoom in, or not zoom, but move towards your subject. RZ to rotate it back here. I just want to fill up my frame with you know my structure. So that's good right there. <laughs> Now we've got one light already in the scene, which is over here, and it is a sunlight, which means the light doesn't come out in all directions. The light emits in one single direction across your entire scene and world. 
So let's see how this looks if I go into rendered view. Looks all right. Now let's add some splash of color by adding some point lights with some color applied to them. So shift A, go down to light, make it a point light, move it over here, make sure it's in front of our structure with enough you know, distance to actually shine on it. Let's make it a uh, blue light. Now we can't see anything because it's super low. It's only 10 watts. Let's make it 1000 watts. There we go, we see a little bit of light there. Move up our radius, maybe to 10 meters. Make us 10, add another zero there, make it 10,000 watts. That's cool. Okay, so we got a blue light. Now uh, let's make it a little bigger. Let's, let's try like 50 meters. Okay, maybe 30. And then double this to like 20,000. Okay, that's good enough. Now with this one selected, shift D and move this one down here and do an opposite color, you know, like orange. Let's get some color contrast or maybe some yellow. Yellow and blue is always fun. Now back in our camera view, we can see that we've got some blue light coming from this corner, some yellow coming from down here. And that's what I did in my render. I think I did like very similar colors and similar lighting setup. Okay, another thing to add some photorealism is depth of field. So select your camera, go down here, turn on depth of field, click on your eyedropper and grab an object that you feel that the viewer will first look at. You know, if I'm looking at this picture, I'm probably not gonna look all the way over here. I'm gonna look at something near the center of the picture. So I'm gonna actually select, uh, I'll do the center of beam right here. Here we go. That's where my focus is set. Make your f-stop a small number like 0.5 or one. It depends on the size of your scene, but the stuff that's further in the background will get blurred depending on how small or large your f-stop number is. It totally does not like connect with real photography right now because these numbers are numbers are impossible. Try point one. I don't know. This is getting a little crazy. Yeah, see the stuff in front, like closer to the camera is blurred. That beam is sharp and back here is blurred. So maybe not point one, maybe point three or something like that. Just a little bit of blur is nice and kind of adds to the realism in, in the eye of the viewer to convince them that it's real. Okay, so let's run into this and see what it looks like. All right, and here it is. So I've, I've got an NVIDIA 2080 that's overclocked, rendered at 32 samples with optics denoising turned on, and it took this 34 seconds to render. And this looks really nice. We've got a little bit of blurring over in the foreground and in the background. The rest looks nice. You know, all the colors are really popping and looking cool because we got those little color cast point lights in there. Um, and yeah, beautiful scene. Hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you have any questions or if I just totally screwed up something or missed something, uh, let me know down in the comments. I'm pretty good about getting back to you guys and correcting myself or uh, letting you know uh, what, uh, you know, what to do if you're having trouble with something. If there's any specific Blender videos or Photoshop or Lightroom videos you want to see in the future, please comment down below and let me know what you want to learn more about so that I can make those videos and make you guys happy. But thank you so much for watching and have a great week.